Industrial automation has been around long before PLCs were invented. Before PLCs, it was possible to automate a process using relay-based control systems. This approach, however, required huge amounts of relays, cabling and space, and it was difficult to maintain for these reasons. A small change in the system would require rewiring, and a single wire breakage could mean that the whole system would not work. In the 1960s, the first ideas for a replacement of these hardwired relay systems arose. During the 1960s, independently of each other, the companies Allen Bradley and General Motors, they investigated the electronic replacement of the hardwired relay systems and both created the first PLCs. The first PLC was the Modicon model 084 and this was delivered in 1969. This PLC consisted of a processor board, memory and a logic solver board which parsed the algorithms associated with ladder logic. The Modicon 084 was not a success for various reasons, such as it being very slow and it lacked some useful features. In 1973, the Modicon 184 was released, which is recognized as being the first mass market PLC to achieve success. Now, let's fast forward a few decades to the theme for this tutorial, Twinkat. Twinkat stands for the Windows Control and Automation Technology. Beckhoff, the company behind Twinkat, was founded in 1980 in Verl, Germany, and have been active in the field of automation since the start. One of Beckhoff's main business ideas is PC-based control. Starting in the 80s, Beckhoff started with PC-based control running on a standard PC in DOS. This was a big shift in the PLC market, as the other manufacturers much more relied on proprietary hardware and software. In 1996, Beckhoff released Twinkat 2, in where it was possible to turn a standard PC-based computer running Windows into a real-time capable controller. This is accomplished by having the Twinkat kernel having direct access to the hardware for all real-time critical tasks and using Windows for all user space applications. Beckhoff did as most PLC developers do even till this day, by creating their own integrated development environment, in where you could do PLC software coding. Next to the integrated development environment, there was a system manager installed, in which all the configurations of the PLC was done. In 2012, Twinkat 3 was released to the public. With Twinkat 3, Beckhoff integrated both the development environment and the functionality of the system manager into Microsoft Visual Studio. Now everything related to configuration, writing code, compiling, publishing, and doing version control could be done from this single integrated development environment. Visual Studio is a modern and very popular development environment. Until 2020, both the development environment and runtime was running in Windows. Nowadays, there is a Twinkat runtime for both Windows and for Beckhoff's free BSD derivative called TCBSD. All PLC software development is however still made in a Windows environment. By using a modern and popular IDE as Visual Studio, it was also easier for people that were already acquainted with IT software development to start with PLC software development. To be able to do PLC software in Visual Studio, Beckhoff relies on a compiler made by Codesys, which is a German manufacturer of IEC 611.31-3 automation software. Codesys development tools are not only used by Beckhoff, but, but uh, there's um, many, many other PLC manufacturers that are using this. They even provide a runtime for the Raspberry Pi, which I've experimented a little bit with. You can read more about it in the link provided below. Beckhoff are using the Codesys compiler and parts of the development tools made by Codesys and then integrates them into Visual Studio. Fact is, if you download the Codesys vanilla development environment, you will find many similarities between it and Twinkat 3. If you worked with Codesys prior to Twinkat 3, you will have plenty of moments where you will recognize yourself. Twinkat 3 consists of two main parts. This is a simplified view of the XAE and XAR and the relation between them. First, we have the XAE, which stands for Extended Automation Engineering, and this is the development environment for Twinkat 3 software. It includes, amongst many other things, the integrated development environment based on Visual Studio. It also includes libraries for various functionality and the compiler itself. It's with the XAE that you create, edit and compile your Twinkat 3 projects. The XAE is always installed on a Windows machine, so you can't run this on any other operating system such as Linux. Next, we have the XAR, which stands for Extended Automation Runtime. 
In here we find, amongst many other things, the Twinkat real-time kernel, which provides the deterministic properties of our PLC software. We also find drivers for the industrial field bus protocols, such as ETCAT, that we will talk more about in a coming part of this tutorial. The XAR can be installed both on a Windows machine and Beckhoff's own operating system, TCBSD. The XAE and XAR communicate with each other using a protocol called ADS, and we will get back to this protocol in a coming episode of this tutorial. The only thing that's important to understand now is that you can communicate between these two parts, for example, to upload new software, or if you want to read some variables, or if you want to write some variables. So Beckhoff provides this interface between these two. Through field bus interfaces, Twinket can communicate with various sensors, such as temperature, pressure, and position sensors. And it can also actuate actuators, such as relays, valves, and electric motors. When you have successfully compiled a Twinket 3 project on your XAE development machine, it will create an executable binary. Through the integrated development environment, we can transfer this program to the XAR and execute it, so that it's running in the real-time environment of Twinket 3. To complicate things slightly, a download of the XAE also includes the XAR, which means that if you install the XAE, you will be able to run your Twinket software locally on your development machine. So you don't need a separate PLC to try your software. This is one of the key points of Twinket 3. The Beckhoff PLCs are just ordinary PCs, however, with some optimized BIOS settings for real-time behavior, and the hardware is also industrialized, so you can connect a 24 volt power supply uh, to it. However, except for these minor changes, it's, it's basically a PC. The possibility to run all your Twinket software during the development phase on your local computer is just such a great advantage. You don't need to buy any special hardware to test your Twinket software. Fact is, we're going to go even one step further in this tutorial and do most of the uh, development on a virtual machine using VirtualBox. For this tutorial, we don't care about low jitter and proper real-time behavior, as we are not going to run our code in a production environment. Another great advantage with Twinket 3 compared to most other PLC runtimes is that you can develop and run your software without any cost. Every seven days, you only need to enter a CAPTCHA, and then you can run your Twinket software without interruptions during this time. When you download the Twinket 3 XAE, you'll get the Twinket XAE shell development environment, which is based on Visual Studio. It's basically a version of Visual Studio where the possibility for all other languages such as C Sharp or C++ have been removed, but all the other functionality of Visual Studio is left intact. This functionality is for example the build command, search and replace function, integrated version control with Git, etc. All of that is still left intact. If your only intention is to do Twinket software development, the TCXAE shell works perfectly fine. If you happen to have any Visual Studio already installed on your computer, the Twinket XAE installer will give you the possibility to integrate Twinket into them. Beckhoff continuously adds support for newer versions of Visual Studio when releasing new versions of Twinket. Here is an example screenshot of how it can look like when we're installing the Twinket 3 XAE into a computer that already has a couple of versions of Visual Studio installed uh, on, on this computer. And here we can see that the installer allows us to integrate Twinket uh, into these versions of Visual Studio. We'll get back to this uh, qu quite soon. Now, you might ask, but I don't have any Visual Studio installed on my machine. Should I download the version of Visual Studio from Microsoft or use the one that is bundled with the XAE? Well, this all boils down to what you want to do. If you only want to do PLC programming, the one bundled with the XAE is just fine. However, if you also want to do some programming in any other languages that the Visual Studio supports, such as C Sharp, C++, or the web programming languages, then you need a version for Microsoft, that is the Community Professional or Enterprise Edition. Now it's time to download the Twinket XAE. Uh, and for this tutorial, I'll be using VirtualBox to... So I will use a virtual machine for our Twinket development. And uh, you don't need to do this. You don't have to use VirtualBox. You don't need to use Virtual Machine at all. You can install the development environment directly on your computer. But again, VirtualBox, it's, it's for free, so you can just download it. And the advantage of this is, of course, that uh, we can create a completely isolated environment for, for all our Twinket software. And uh, I've created a machine here that has uh, 
eight gigabytes of RAM and uh, four co four cores. Uh, it's not necessary to to have. Eight, I mean, you could probably run it with with less than this, but I would say this is still recommended to have a good experience. This is the actual machine that we're gonna do the installation in. I'm gonna go switch over to full screen on this machine, and uh, first you have to download the actual software, which you do on uh, so okay, backoff.com. Then you go to download finder. Then you go down to software and tools. And then as the first download here, you have the XAE. If that, if that wouldn't be the case, just write XAE here, and then it should show up at the top. Then you go to downloads, and then we download here. At this moment in time, the latest version of the XAE is 3.1.4024.12. This is the version I'm gonna use for the, the complete uh, tutorial. Then when you download it, you press start download and you need so you need to have an account at Backoff. It's completely free. You you need to register, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, so you in this case will log in and then you have it here. So this this downloads, it's quite a big download, but again, this also includes the runtime uh, and everything we need to actually run the software. So we're gonna run all the software directly on the on the virtual machine here. I want to mention also that uh, I've prepared this machine with uh, four installations of Visual Studio. So if we go here, we have uh, Visual Studio 2013, 15, 17 and 19 installed. All of these are the community uh, versions of, of Visual Studio. You don't need to download uh, any Visual Studio for this. You can just use the Visual Studio that is included with, with Twinket. And that is what I'm gonna use for the rest of the tutorial. I will use the Twinket, uh, the TCXAE shell. The only reason I've installed these is to just show you that, they're, that they will come up as alternatives for Twinket to integrate into. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's see, extract. Okay, so start the installation. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Select yes. And the installer is starting. Very, very exciting. That is at least what I hope you think. No, but it is, it's really fun. And again, it's quite a big package. I mean, back of our continuously adding more and more functionality for every uh, new release. I remember when, when I started with Twinket, the installer was just a few hundreds of megabytes. Now it's a, a gigabyte. Anyway, click next. I accept, or actually, of course, you have to read the license terms, right? Because that's what every one of us is always doing. Yeah, sure. Yes, I accept. I mean, this is, uh, this is an addition. It, Twinket uses Git internally for, for some functionality where you have multiple users editing the same project. Just accept this. We're gonna get back to this thing with Git and version control in a, in a future video, in a future part of this tutorial. Just select the complete installation. And this is what I wanted to show you. So, so here uh, we can select uh, whether we want to use uh, Twinket whether we want Twinket to integrate into the existing versions of Visual Studio that we already have. And uh, we can select to do that. And um, I mean, in this case, we can do it if you have some existing versions. But what I want to show is this is the important part to install the Twinket XE shell because this is the, uh, the editor that we will be using. We will install Twinket uh, to all versions of Visual Studio. So I can just show you that, that Twinket has integrated into them. But for the tutorial, we will use the Twinket XAE shell. And if you don't have any Visual Studio, I want to point out again, if you don't have any Visual Studio installed already, 
Twinket will install this as a default, the Twinket XA shell. And again, this is the only one we're gonna use for the rest of the tutorial. So I select next here. And uh, yeah, that's something we need as well. Something with safety projects, not, not anything we will do in, in this tutorial. And then install. And now it's gonna install the, the complete development environment, but also the whole XAR, which includes uh, like the drivers for, for network adapters. So you can run the ETCAT field bus, for example. Uh, and, and many other many other things. So now we'll just uh, have to have to wait. Here we can see the back of Twinket XAE shell is installed. Now we can see that Twinket is uh, being integrated into the versions of, different versions of Visual Studio. So we can actually see them pop up one after the other. So that was probably 2013, and probably we're gonna see. Uh, 2015 pop up here so each version of Visual Studio is just going to pop up while, while Twinket is doing the integration into it that's the third Visual Studio and that looks like Visual Studio 2019 when you watch this video uh, you might have a much newer version of Visual Studio already available and Twinket might support it or it might not, uh, you can either uh, look for this information, it's wh whether you can install it uh, in, in your version of Visual Studio on the backup website, or just ask your local backup support. Now uh, the installer is installing various other packages uh, that are included. So as we're gonna see in, in a future video, there are many other supplements that you can install into Twinket. Some are very optional, like if you wanna add a database, then most people might not want to have a database editor, so this is not installed by default. But the TwinSafe editor, for example, here, that's, that's necessary to do safety projects, which is one very core and central part of, of, of Twinket. So this is installed. So Beckoff basically now installs the, some, some of these supplements. And in a future video, we will also install other supplements. So now we're getting some more packages. We saw some drivers there being installed. The scope server, which is installed now, that's a really, really good function that we won't cover in this tutorial. But I r highly encourage you to, to look into this uh, after the tutorial is finished, because it's a function that it's very, very good, because you can basically just plot various variables in, in a time on an X and Y graph, and, and you can just see how the different data is developing over time. I, I would say I use this every day, especially in, in systems where I want to understand some some behavior re uh, with regards to motion then this is very useful i would uh, highly recommend you to to look into this after the tutorial though because we have a lot of more fun and interesting stuff to cover first to make you a full-fledged twinka 3 developer okay so twinka is installed the only thing that's still left to do is to basically finish and it will ask us to restart, which we will do. So just click yes. So now I just wanted to show you that we have this new icon in the taskbar. And here we can see that we can open all the different versions of Visual Studio. So the Twinket XA development environment and depending on which Visual Studio we want to use. And also this one that is included together with the installer. So for example, if we launch 2019 and create a new project, we see here that we have Twinket projects as an option. And we can also start the XAE, TCXAE shell, which is uh, the one that we got from the installer. This particular version is actually the one, this 3140.24.12 is based on Visual Studio 2017. And here we see we have a, a new, we can create a new Twinket project just as with the, with the 2019. Once the machine is rebooted, you will have a new icon in the taskbar. From this icon, you can do various tasks, which includes, but is not limited to, starting your development environment, that is the TCXE shell, 
Visual Studio 2013, 2015, etc. You can create connections, so-called ADS AMS routes, to Twinkat 3 runtimes. You can switch the Twinkat runtime between run and config. We will get back to this very soon again. The routes are used to communicate with other devices running Twinkat, such as a target PLC, that will run the software that you will develop. As we will be running all PLC code locally in a runtime that we have on a development machine, we won't be creating any routes, as the development machine always has a default route to the local host. Twinkat can be in three different modes, which are indicated by different colors of the Twinkat icon in the taskbar. First, we have config mode, which is indicated by a blue color. Then we have run mode, which is indicated by a green color. And then we have the stop exception mode, which is indicated by a yellow color. This dictates what state the Twinkat runtime, that is the XAR, is at. Because an XAR is included with the XAE, it means that you control the Twinkat state on your local machine through this. So what's the difference between these three states? First, the blue one, the config mode, and you want to be in config mode every time you do any changes to the system, which might affect the PLC software that is being executed. This might, for example, be that you want to do changes in the PLC software, adding supplements such as a database connectivity or upgrading Twinkat. In all other cases, when you want to run the actual Twinkat PLC software, the XAR should be in run mode. In this mode, Twinkat will run all your tasks and programs. You normally never want to be in the stop exception mode, which you can end up in if you for example get an exception, such as a null pointer exception or a stack overflow. Switching Twinkat between config and run mode is done by right-clicking on the taskbar and selecting system, and then start restart or config. This can also be accomplished through the development environment, which we will do in the next part. Now we have our development environment configured. In the next video, we will configure our machine so that it can run Twinkat 3 programs. And then we will create our very first program.